Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 15 of Journaling on a Budget starting over. And today we are going to make stained glass tape. I had um, people say that they weren't able to get the medical tape, and um, you know, were there other things that they could use because masking tape's not see-through, and I got to thinking about regular scotch tape. And scotch tape is very sticky. It's not really removable, but you really don't want it to come off anyways. So if we use parchment paper, and this is just uh, parchment paper from the Dollar Tree that I got. You can also get it in a roll. Um, I got this one when um, that's all they had. They didn't have any in a roll, so I got this. And they're actually quite nice coming in sheets like this. But um, the, the scotch tape does come off the parchment paper. So... If the cool thing about the scotch tape, if you use alcohol links with it, it's very see-through. So this is a piece of tape here that I have already dyed, already stained, or whatever you want to call it. And see, you can see the words right through it. So you can see anything that you want to through it. Or put it on something clear, like acetate or something, and hang it in the window and, you know, actually make a little um, stained glass uh, decoration for your windows. So this is what we're going to do today. And here are some, just some different um, patterns that I tried. And the thing is, is that if you don't have alcohol inks, because, you know, they're not the cheapest. And if you don't have any, um, I will try and link below if I remember to put the link to where we made our own alcohol inks. But if you don't have those either, and you don't want to make your own, um, then you can just use permanent markers and rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to show you how to do that too. This one here, this is permanent marker. And if you don't have the little pads like everybody has like this, that's not a big deal. A little bit of Velcro from the Dollar Tree. And... Now, this is on a wooden block, but if you don't have a wooden block, you can put it on cardboard. You can put on anything that you have. Um, just put a little bit of Velcro on there. And the little pads that you buy at the store are basically the same as a piece of felt. So this is just a plain old piece of felt. And I just cut it to about the size. I'm going to kind of put it in the corner. Since it's not quite as big as my block, it doesn't have to be. But I have one here. Here it is this one and again this is just some um and this is the um what would you say this is the hook side of the hook and loop um velcro this is the like the hard side the pokey side and that just grabs right onto your grabs right onto your felt and holds it there so that you can use it now the thing is is don't throw these away the more you use them the better they actually will be and like this is like this is my blue purple one and I use this constantly because as soon as you get it you start to get it wet it kind of reconstitutes what's already in the pad and so that way you're not using as much or wasting as much you know here is an orange one and here is a green one and so if you put your colors on here the alcohol in the um alcohol inks will reconstitute what's already dried on there to a certain extent and um, so you don't have to use as much and you get a deeper color and that's part of the reason why these are a deeper color than this and it is because this was a brand new pad because this was just with markers so I didn't want to use um, a pad that already had alcohol inks on it but these ones that I did with the alcohol ink this pad was already saturated. It has been for, you know, years probably. I use them for a really long time. Um, there's no point in using new ones. And again, this is just plain old felt from the craft store. So let's just take, this is regular scotch tape. And actually, I think this is pretty cheap scotch tape. I don't even know where I got it. Um, but just take your scotch tape, put it on your parchment. Don't put down one end take one end and fold it over so you've got just a little tab to grab a hold of to get it off of there. Um, that does really help, especially with the scotch tape. 
because the scotch tape does stick down pretty good, you can get it off, but you gotta really kind of work in it before you can get it off. And then see how cool that is and how see-through it is. There's something, see how see-through it is? I don't wanna let it stick on there too much. Ah, there we go. And the thing with this is, you don't have to uh, put the stick glue underneath of it because it sticks pretty good. So just put down a few pieces, depending, you know, however many you want to do. I'm going to just do a couple to give you the gist of what we're doing. So, and then we're just going to take, so I've got some red and orange alcohol inks here. Oh, I should do... I should do the blue one so that our pad would be a little bit used because I'm going to use a brand new pad for the orange one. That's going to make a difference. It will make it lighter, but eventually, and you just add a little more, you know, you don't, if, it, if it's a little too light, you add a little bit more of your permanent pen when you're going to do that. But there we go. Now this is alcohol inks. I'm going to put those here. My tape is here. I know it's hard to see probably, but you can see it a little bit. And I am just going to. And you know, you can do it however you want to. As far as you can swipe it, you can pat it. Once you get it on there, you can put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on your pad and that will um, change the way it looks also. But we're just going to do it like that. And now we have this really pretty see-through orange and red tape. Now, like I said, if you don't have it, you can just... Permanent markers. Permanent markers are alcohol-based, and that's why they work. That's why your regular markers... Oh, oh I'm, I pulled out one that's all dried out. Let's see how the red does. Oh, they're both dried out. Well, it would have been smart had I tried them before. I wonder how the yellow one is. All right, the yellow one works, so we'll do yellow. Okay, now, it's just scribbled on, and that's totally fine. You can even leave it that way. But if you want it to look more like alcohol inks do, Oops, that's just my big bottle. This is 91% rubbing alcohol. You want the least amount of water. When it says what percentage it is, it's that percent of alcohol, and it's 9% of something else, which I believe is just water. Um, inactive ingredients is water. So this is just isopropyl alcohol and water. So if it's 91%, that's 91% alcohol. If it's like 70%, that's 70% alcohol and 30% water. It does not work as well. So the higher the percentage of alcohol that you can get, the better off it is. And I put it, this was an eyedropper bottle and I could peel the label off of it. If you have a bottle like this that you cannot peel the label, I suggest you do not use it because you would not want someone to think that it's eye drops and put it in their eye. And then I also mark it very well for two reasons. I do bleach this way and I do rubbing alcohol this way. And so that way I know which is which. And also because I want anyone who's going to pick this bottle up to know, even though it looks like an eyedropper bottle, this is not eye drops, even though there's no label on it anymore. So whenever you take the label off, the second you put something in there, actually before you put something in there, mark the bottle, then put it in there so you don't get distracted and forget to do that um, so that nothing bad happens. So we're just going to take a few drops of rubbing alcohol. And what that's going to do is it's going to move the permanent marker And get rid of your lines and make it more more of a like solid color this really needs to have two colors so you can kind of see how it's working but now there it is it doesn't look like scribbles anymore let's put a little bit of this blue in here so there we go we've got that blue and then you just pat the alcohol on there 
and it starts moving it. And the alcohol mixes with the pen to move it around. It's a permanent pen, so they're not, it's not supposed to move, but the alcohol will move it. And it takes a little bit. And like I said, there's nothing on my pad. So my pad is actually picking up some of the color. But now you have this look, which I have to say that in the camera, it still looks like a line right here in front of me. It does not. So we'll just see what we can do. I didn't want to rub it in too much. And it still kind of looks like a line, but, but believe me, it doesn't quite look like a line here. It looks very um, different in color. Now, if you want it to really look like stained glass, you could do something like make a little template and put it under your parchment paper. You don't want to draw with your black marker until after you've got your alcohol ink on there because your black marker is also permanent ink. So the second that you put either alcohol ink, which has rubbing alcohol in it, or the rubbing alcohol from your bottle, any anything off your sponge, it's going to make that black just smudge all over the place. So you can't put this on to start with, but you can kind of maybe color, and I have not tried this yet, so hopefully it works. But basically to kind of color it and then let it put a little alcohol on it to get it to, to move a bit. Or technically, you don't even really have to do that. You could just leave it like it is and it will still be. A little bit see-through depending on how dark the marker you're using is but and I wish I had a few more colors that worked but we're gonna try this and see what it what happens when we put the rubbing alcohol because I'm hoping it just makes it um, kind of flow out a little bit and can't use the blue. I guess I could use the yellow. Um, but kind of stay in its area. So that you can then go in and draw your black lines on there and make it look like stained glass. So I'm going to put a couple more. I think I'm going to do it on this one. A little bit of alcohol on there. And I really should have kind of started in the yellow area. Oops. So put that back under there. And let's see, that's the wet side. Gonna put a little bit on this side to do the purple, which is already starting to smudge. There we go. So now this is what you have. When you put the alcohol on there, you get these little, you get the little um like dots. You kind of get those in the um that painting that they do. But, um, so we're just going to kind of put this back under there. <laughs> if I can figure out where we had it to start with. I think it was right there. Okay, now you'd let that dry, which takes a few minutes, not a real long time. And then use your black marker to outline it to make it into stained glass.
And don't forget the edges of your tape. And this is just very quick. You know, when I do these things, it's not to really show you how beautiful I can make it. It's more to show you the technique you can use to just take this and run with it and do with it whatever you think is a, a cool thing to do. But it's just to kind of give you some ideas with stuff that, you know, most people do have. Most people have scotch tape around the house or it's something that is easy pretty much for everyone to get. So now we have this stained glass tape that we can put on a project and it's going to be see-through. I'll try and find my scissors here. And we've got all of this tape up here. Let's grab, this is the book that we made our, um, I used the cover to make our box last week. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it, let's see, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to put it right across the words. Cut that out. See now, under the tape, you can see the words. And if you were to put some drawing under there or have some lines or whatever, whatever's back there is going to show through, basically. And then you have this piece of stained glass on whatever it is that you're making. I can never do those very well. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on the back of that to hold two pieces together, just so it's a little thicker. I'll go in and glue it better later, but I want it to be a little thicker right now so I can handle it. And then one other really quick thing I wanted to show you, which I've shown a long time ago, but I haven't used it in a while, and that is your own homemade background stamp because we've got all this back here and we don't want to look at that. So what do we use? This is just a Kleenex. I wadded it up, hold on to it, and grab some ink of some sort. Turn it in different directions so it's not exactly the same, unless you want it exactly the same. You can even move it around so that it's different shapes so it's not the same pattern repeated over and over. And then let's even, I'll grab another one. And just take it and you don't want it to be really super smooth so just Take it and get little bits there so that you've got lots of different layers. And put that down. You can move it around. But see how nicely that just gives you that little covering on your background to give you some place to go next. And every time you do it, it's going to be different. It gives you cool little shapes, which are awesome. And everybody's always looking for background stamps. They're not necessarily cheap because they're usually larger stamps. And a lot of times they're a larger stamp, but you only need a little bit. So this just gives you a background stamp that somebody might think that was really a real stamp, a real acrylic stamp or something that you used and actually it was just your own homemade background stamp. If you find one you love, stamp a few extra things before you let it get unwound because you'll never replace it. It'll always be a little bit different, but I did these two. This one 
is the same. That was this one before. And, and then this one also. I didn't put any on the back of these. So, but yes, they make really cool background stamps. So, we've got background stamps. We've got homemade washi. We've got homemade stained glass. And technically, that's not washi. It's our stained glass tape because washi is more removable, or that's kind of what it's made to do. But it's very cool. So, something simple, something you have at home. Great ways to play around. Great ways to get a background covered. And, um... You know, it is just really such a simple thing to do. I'm going to put some of this on a piece of paper, too. Just so you can see what... I'm tending to like blue and purple right now, so we're seeing that a lot. I'm going to put this one down here so that you can see what it looks like. Just part of it. Oops. See, now it's stuck. It's not coming off of there. So I can save this piece for something else. And the one that was made with our permanent markers. I keep forgetting, don't press them down because they're not coming back up once you press them down. But there we go. There's our rubbing alcohol. There is our permanent markers, or this is our alcohol ink, permanent markers with rubbing alcohol, and I think that they're just really cool. Lots of stuff that you can do with it, and a nice, easy, reasonably priced project to play with. So, thank you very much for stopping by, and don't forget, you can make your own little ink spreaders like this with a piece of felt. You can, if you have these, you can, they come with the Velcro already on them. See, they've stapled their Velcro on there. That's just sticky back Velcro. I've never had a problem with it. Um, but if you run out of your little pads for these, you can also just use regular felt from the craft store and it works just as well. You might say, well, this is a lot stiffer. Now, this is stiffer because it is so saturated with color. That's why it's stiff. It was nice and soft when I first got it. But like I said, I will keep that until I get to the point where mm, I've muddied the color too bad to use it anymore. So don't forget that you can make your own pads too. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.